Welcome to the World Summit on the Information Society 2016 in Geneva, Switzerland. And I'm delighted to be joined by Cyril Ritchie, who's president of the Conference of NGOs. Cyril, civil society has a big role here at the WISIS uh, Forum. It prides itself on being a bottom-up uh, organization. How important is WISIS for you? Well, that principle you just mentioned is extremely important. Uh, this dates back, of course, to the original uh, two events in 2003 and 2005, where there was an attempt, a successful attempt, by the preparatory committee to involve civil society already in the preparatory meetings and then at the conferences themselves, much more in one than the other because of uh, geographic considerations. And that has, that has continued the whole way through. Um, the WISIS process is a very good example within the UN system of the partnership between governments, uh, civil society, business, academia, and, and, and that's one of the reasons for its success and one of the reasons why one sees so many people coming to the, the forum uh, each year. And uh, you indeed, in your opening remarks yesterday, you said that uh, you welcome mm -hmm. this open constitution uh, was the watchword at WISIS, but you were also concerned that there were some disturbing trends that were happening, mm. uh, threats to civil society. Well, I made the distinction, of course, between what's happening at the international level, which is reasonably satisfactory, one can always do more, and what's happening in a number of countries around the world with uh, national legislation on civil society, on NGOs, on human rights activists, on limiting freedom of expression, freedom of opinion, freedom of assembly, all the fundamental freedoms that are uh, underwritten in the various international covenants. And um, the fact that a, a, a rather large number of countries have over the last uh, five, ten years introduced legislation restricting uh, freedom of association in one form or another at the finance level, at the uh, freedom of assembly level, the registration procedures and all that, that has a very deleterious effect on the development of civil society, which is citizens expressing their opinions through organized uh, associations and, and, and other, other types of structures. That, 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 those limitations will ultimately, uh, are already having uh, consequences at the international level. What sort of response did you get uh, from people in the audience yesterday when you made that very strong call uh, for NGOs not to have these limitations placed uh, around them? Well, the NGOs, the civil society people were generally rather uh, welcoming. That you were they championing their cause. Enthusiastic, because uh, they oh, most of them, not necessarily at their international offices, but through their national affiliates, are feeling the consequences. If you have affiliates in these countries, then it hampers the connection, the interaction between the affiliate and the international body, and limits that those national NGOs or civil society groupings, it limits their participation in the international process. Because we mustn't only be the international headquarters who come here, we must also hear voices from the field. And with financial restrictions, uh, harassment in a number of countries, uh, name calling by government spokesmen ag against NGOs. There is a very deleterious climate that uh, interacts with the international uh, processes, which are, as I say, quite satisfactory. Uh, we can always improve, but quite satisfactory. And WISIS, as I repeat, is a very good example of that openness, and ITU has taken a, a real lead in, in helping to keep that, that process as, 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 uh, as in conformity with freedom of opinion and freedom of expression. Here at WISIS, one of the big themes, of course, is uh, how information and communication technology can accelerate the sustainable development mm. goals. What is the voice like of the civil society in shaping the sustainable development goals? Do you think their voice is being heard enough? Well, not enough, but it certainly is being heard. I mean, we do, after all, and I would include here the non-civil society sector, the business sector. These, the business sector and the civil society sector are the people who know the needs of people. Some want to sell things to them and others want to uh, give them a voice. But the ultimate goal is to help implant ICTs more widely uh, in numbers and in extent and therefore influence development as such and that's the link with the with the SDGs that uh, they will not be achieved uh, certainly not in time 
unless one m maximizes the use of ICTs, one, one incorporates ICTs at every level from now, from, not from now on, already in the past, but increasingly. I mean, it's a, what, what could one call it, a, a, a mechanism and a technique for involving people and giving greater access to people. It, it, it increases freedom of opinion and freedom of expression and that itself is the, one of the major goals in, inherent in the SDGs. Cyril Ritchie, President of the Conference of NGOs, thank you very much for joining us thank today. You. And do please tune in to the ITU YouTube channel where you can watch videos from experts like Cyril Ritchie from the Civil Society, experts from government, private and public sector.